Good morning and welcome to our service for the day of Pentecost, the day on which the Holy Spirit enlivened the community of Jesus' disciples and created the, and empowered the fellowship that came to be known as the church. So, glad that you're with us today. Some special uh, things that are part of the service today, as well as the usual great music. And so let us begin with our Easter acclamation. Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Our opening hymn is number 516, Come Down, O Love Divine. together the colleague for Pentecost. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then the Spirit said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And now let us pray responsively from Psalm 104. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that great Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. 
and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. The story of Pentecost is told in the second chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in their own native language. Egypt, Parthia, Mesopotamia, Cappadocia, Libya, Pamphylia. Amazed and astonished, they asked, "Aren't these people from Galilee? How is that we hear each of us in our own native language?" Visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled They're with filled new with wine. wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what it was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour, my, pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our sequence hymn is number 531, O Spirit of the Living God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send the Advocate to you. And when the Advocate comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, the Spirit will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. The Spirit will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning and happy Pentecost. Uh, If you don't know me, my name is Tyler Jarvis and I am the Director of Children's and Youth Ministries here at Christ Church and I am really excited to have the opportunity to preach again this morning. Um, Our kids and teenagers did a fantastic job recording the Pentecost story. They recorded that a few weeks ago and some of them recorded it on short notice. So we really appreciate them stepping up to help us out with that, along with everybody who helped getting the video together, like Mark Sullivan and Father Harrison and all of the parents who helped make that a a possibility. So thanks so much to them for helping out, and I hope that you enjoyed their retelling of the Pentecost story. Um, The story of Pentecost is one of those stories that I have heard my entire life, and yet every time I engage with it, I continue to find new meaning and and new things that get me excited in this Pentecost story, and and this time is no different in preparing for this sermon. So what's going to happen this morning is I'm going to preach to myself about some things that I see in the text that, uh, that maybe I need to work on that I've never really paid attention to in this text before. And if it's something that you also can benefit from, that is great. And, uh, and we can learn and grow together. And if you get, you know, three minutes into the sermon and you go, I already know all of this. I don't need to listen to this. That's okay. To, that's fine. I'm preaching to myself, like I said. So feel free to let your mind water, wander or skip back in the video to watch the kids pageant again. Uh, whatever you want to do during this time. Um, As always, I'd like to start with a prayer before we jump into discussing our text and our sermon this morning. So uh, let's pray together and then uh, we'll move forward. God, we come to you grateful that uh, we can worship together. Uh, We're grateful for the season of Pentecost, for, uh, for this commemoration of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which we'll talk about a little bit today. And we ask that as we hear this story today, that we will be open to hear Uh, what you are wanting for us, uh, that we will be sensitive to the movings of the Holy Spirit, and uh, that we will uh, grow and move and do powerful things in the world because of your Spirit at work within us. Uh, We love you, God, and it's in your Son's name that we pray. Amen. Uh, So, as the kids and the teenagers showed us in the video this morning, uh, the day of Pentecost 
was a day when a bunch of the Jewish people gathered from a whole bunch of different countries and regions in order to originally celebrate the harvest, but also, and perhaps more importantly, the giving of the law on Mount Sinai to Moses uh, hundreds of years prior to uh, the story that we're talking about today. So, on this particular Pentecost, what the book of Acts tells us is the Holy Spirit shows up and lands on the heads or above the heads of the people who are there and who believe in Jesus. And they all start speaking to each other and understanding each other in their own languages. It's this, it's this miraculous translation that seems to be happening um, where, where, you know, I, I speak to you and uh, you hear it in your own native language, even though I'm speaking my language, and then you speak back to me, and I hear it in my language, even though you're speaking your language. It's kind of a cool thing. And the thing that sticks out about this text to me this this week, or this time that I've looked at it, is, is not just that they understand each other, which would be cool uh, all by itself, but that they understand each other in their own native languages. And I think this is an important detail uh, because because I think it tells us a little something about God and how God envisions the kingdom of God to function, right? So so like I was saying earlier, they don't turn to each other and start saying, oh, hey, I guess we all understand Greek now, even though I used to only speak, you know, Phrygian or Pamphylian or whatever, fill in the blank with those interesting sounding languages that, uh, that we talked about in the reading that the kids and the teenagers did, right? But rather than them all speaking one language, God enabled them to understand each other and be in community with each other without taking away their distinctive languages or what makes them culturally distinct from one another. And I really love this detail because I think that historically Christianity has had this issue where we tend to kind of steamroll other cultures in our efforts to, efforts to share the gospel. And that's particularly true of Western Christianity and maybe especially true of American Christianity, where, where uh, more often than not, conversion to Christianity also involves conversion to a very specific type of Christianity and a very specific type of culture. In fact, there's this really excellent book that I have. This is called uh, Rescuing the Gospel from the Cowboys. It's by a guy named Richard Twiss. And he is a Native American writer, or he was. He's passed away since he wrote this book. Uh, this is an excellent book. I recommend it to um, anybody. But in this book, he talks about how Christian missionary efforts tended to kind of kill off indigenous cultures by forcing them to abandon their history and their various cultural practices, all in the name of adopting good Christian practice. And so to an extent, it makes sense, right, why we might think that way about conversion, because we tend to know the gospel in our own culture. We know how we practice Christianity, and we know what makes Christianity meaningful to us in our own contexts. So it can be difficult, if not impossible, to separate out which parts of Christianity are the core parts, and which parts are just Western Christian culture. Um, and without meaning to, or without even realizing it, I think, we can internalize the idea that Jesus was just like us, and the apostles were just like us, and they did exactly what we do, and therefore everyone else in every other culture across the world should do things exactly the way that we do in order to be close to Jesus. It's an understandable mistake, but it's also a tragic mistake I mean, that, that leads to cultures being steamrolled and forgotten and abandoned and smashed out and leads to this very homogenous group of Christianity where I think Christianity thrives in diversity. And, and I think that's something that, that, well, that's why stories like the one that we're reading this morning are so important, because it includes these details that remind us that the Holy Spirit didn't come to squash all cultures into one big Christian culture, but that the Holy Spirit came to help us be unified and to overcome barriers to be in community with one another without making us be uniform of practice or language or culture. The Holy Spirit enabled everyone to understand the gospel in their own language. And then when Pentecost was over, they got to go back home to their ho homelands and they shared this story with, uh, with their own native people and with their own native cultures in their own languages in ways that made sense in the culture that they were from. And so, so the gospel is supposed to be um, 
It's supposed to cross cultural boundaries without wrecking those cultural boundaries, right? The gospel, what we see here in Acts is it respects cultural boundaries even while it enables people who are different to work together. And this story is so exciting because it shows us that God is able to overcome our differences without forcing us to not have any differences. This is a gospel of unity, but not a gospel of uniformity. And the church should not feel threatened by diversity of language or diversity of culture or diversity of practice or diversity of thought or even diversity of belief. To the contrary, I think the church thrives in this diversity and the Holy Spirit enables us to work together and to grow together and to celebrate together, not just in spite of our differences, but because of our differences. And I know we live in a world that doesn't always know what to do with cultural differences. Even going on right now, right? About a year ago, we hung this banner outside of the church that says Black Lives Matter. And some people feel uncomfortable with that. Uh, some people say, well, no, come on, that's just divisive. Everybody matters, not just black lives. And I want you to know if that's your reaction to messages like that, I, I understand. Um, it can be scary or it can be uncomfortable to feel like you are being excluded and someone else is getting all of the attention. But I also think that it's important to acknowledge what is lost when we refuse to be specific, right? When we try and boil it down to all lives matter. This is, this is technically true, but it absorbs all people and all cultures and all issues into the majority group where uh, where. Everyone is all part of all, and we don't get to address the specific issues, or this, we don't get to celebrate the specific cultural differences. So, well, I'd say even beyond that, it, we wind up erasing who people are and where they come from, and what's important to them by trying to make us all belong to a single unified group. And so that's why I think it's important that we celebrate diversity, that we put statements like Black Lives Matter on our church, to, to recognize we're not all the same and the Holy Spirit enables us to work together anyway. So it's important to us as a church that we specifically acknowledge our differences and how God is present among those differences so that we can appreciate that our God is a creative God who created each of us to be unique within the kingdom of God. So, on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit enables us to be unified but not uniform, right? The Holy Spirit enables us to break down barriers without losing what makes us unique and distinctive, and it gives us the confidence to celebrate each other's identity without fear of losing our own identity in the process, right? The people at Pentecost kept their own languages. They kept their own culture, but they still had Jesus in common. They still had worship in common, and they still had the kingdom of God in common. Just very, very briefly, uh, the other big reading from the lectionary this morning comes from the book of Ezekiel in chapter 37, and, and basically this is maybe one of the strangest stories in all of the Bible. It's like the very first version of George Romero's Dawn of the Dead, uh, if you've ever seen that, or Night of the Living Dead, I think is actually the first one. Um, and and it's, this, it's a zombie story in the Bible, which is kind of wild. Um, and uh, it also reminds us, I think that the Holy Spirit has this ability to turn death into life, right? Because Ezekiel shows up in this valley and it's just a bunch of dry bones and God tells him to speak and the Holy Spirit comes in and flesh and muscle and sinew and, and organs all form on the bones and he speaks again and then the bones or the, the bodies come to life. And it's, it's a way for, for God to tell Ezekiel when the Spirit of God moves, it moves death into life. And we live in a world right now where our differences are often used as wedges to drive us apart and to, and to take life away. And, we, and people all over the world are suffering and they're in pain and, and even dying because of our inability to live at peace with one another. But this Pentecost story, I think, reminds us that the Holy Spirit is breathing new life. The Holy Spirit is overcoming death and desiccation and leaving in its place life and love, and unity. So, may we be a people who value the differences we see in each other's, 
and seek to honor those differences in the way that we serve God together. Let's pray. God, we come to you now asking that you give us eyes to see what the differences are that exist among us and to celebrate those differences and to not try and force others to assimilate and to not try and assimilate ourselves into this this big collective, but that we celebrate our cultural diversity, that we celebrate the differences that we have and that we work together to use those differences in the kingdom of God. Uh, Help us to rely on the Holy Spirit to bring life And uh, help us to bring that life with us as we go out into the world and as we work uh, and as we play and as we hang out and as we do all of the things that we do. Help us be a people who brings your spirit with us and, uh, and works with diverse people to speak new life and new hope into the world. We thank you so much for being our God and for choosing us as your people. It's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I invite you to turn with me to the Nicene Creed. Uh, it's on page 358 if you're following the prayer book. But the text is all here in your online bulletin. So I invite you to stand with me as you are able. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the light of the world to come. Amen. Please join with me in this morning's prayers of the people. We will follow form three, as provided in your online bulletin, and in the prayer book on page 387. Father, We pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Let us pray for the New Haven parishes of St. Paul and St. James, St. Thomas, and Trinity. Also St. James in London, and for the Anglican Church of Melanesia. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael our bishops Ian and Laura, our rector Harrison, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for your Holy Spirit to inspire decision-making to promote the health and well-being of all people, as we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth, Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. We pray for those commended to the prayers of the parish, including all affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, those who are on house and lonely, for those suffering from addiction, victims of violence, for those serving in the military and their families, 
for the unemployed and the underemployed, and for those who are sick and suffering. Have compassion on them and on all those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Remembering the over 589,000 of our fellow citizens who have died from the novel coronavirus, give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We pray for the repose of James Palmer, Joyce Allen, and Alphonse Ferraro, and all those whom we hold in blessed memory. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, including all those commended to the prayers of the parish, including Craig, Carol, Maureen, Eugenia, Anne, Elizabeth, Jim, Kevin, and Danielle. And for those we name aloud or in silence, here and at home. Continuing to pray for the ceasefire in Israel and Palestine, that justice may prevail and peace may be found. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by that same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in your holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. Let's share that with one another. Peace. 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 Peace be with you. Well, I can tell that the humidity's up because my glasses are fogging so much easier this morning. Um, it's Pentecost, and what a great day. It is so glad that you're uh, joining with us today. Um, it was exciting to be able to um, announce in the announcements yesterday what's uh, going to be happening in the, in the coming weeks. But before I go there, let me just say a word of thanks to uh, Tyler Jarvis for organizing our young people to tell the Pentecost story this morning and... Uh, to Mark for getting it uh, stitched together so that uh, we all could enjoy it online, and then to Tyler for his challenging sermon. Um, uh, uh, I'm going to miss hearing ch sermons from Tyler, I must say. Um, I, that was a, you know, I've, I have been preaching on the uh, Pentecost story for some time now, but I can always count on Tyler to bring a uh, a little bit of a new angle on it. So uh, I'm grateful uh, for his sermon this morning, and I hope that you are as well. If you'd like to talk about it, that's uh, the, our virtual coffee hour, which is, starts about 1130. Um, and there's a link to that in the announcements. That'd be a good time to do that. And uh, I'll try to give a Reader's Digest version of it at the uh, 1 o'clock uh, Midday prayers in the garden. Yes, it's a, it's really quite a, it's like a summer day today. And yes, we will be in the garden at one o'clock today. We'll also be in the garden at one o'clock next week, May 30th. But our 10 o'clock service next week, we're going to join with the rest of the Episcopal Church in Connecticut for an online service. Uh, it's a, the fifth Sunday. So on fifth Sundays, the uh, the Episcopal Church in Connecticut offers a, a service to be shared throughout the uh, diocese, and uh, 
the service next Sunday at 10 will be from uh, St. Paul's Church in Fairfield. And, uh, uh, some people chuckle when they hear me say, but it's truth. The, the rector there is a fine, young, hip, with it guy who uh, is from the Pacific Northwest, and so you know he speaks the truth. <laughs> um, so, uh, I, you know, there is no guile in Curtis Farr. So I, I encourage you to participate in that service at 10 o'clock next Sunday. Then the following Sunday, June 6th, not next Sunday, not today, not next Sunday, but June 6th, we're going to add a third option for morning worship. The, we'll start the day at 9 o'clock in the garden. If you'd like to come for in-person uh, worship it, outdoors, forecast is for a lovely day, at uh, 9 o'clock, the 1 o'clock service will move to 9 o'clock next Sunday morning, and it will be morning prayer. Then at 10 o'clock, this live stream service will be open, the doors will be open, and the third option will be that in addition to participating live stream, uh, we're going to invite you, if you'd like, uh, you may come and join us in the room. We feel it's now, uh, guidance is that it be safe for us to gather. However, we are going to have the expectations that family and friend bubbles uh, remain about you know, maintain distance, and that we will be wearing masks whenever we're near each other. And, and inside the room, we're going to be wearing masks. So um, our, the service will have basically the same structure beginning June 6th, except that we will be adding the option of uh, receiving communion, and that will be done at the children's altar, so you won't be on camera uh, when you receive the host. And... Uh, that we'll still have the spiritual communion prayer for those who are uh, participating in the worship uh, live stream from, from home. Uh, why are we wearing masks? Well, we are in solidarity with those who are not eligible to be vaccinated. That's why we're wearing masks. So um, there's a, that's, in a nutshell, uh, the reason. So looking forward to... Uh, next Sunday, and really looking forward to June 6th. After the June 6th service, uh, those who are here and those who choose to come uh, back from morning, uh, from the 9 o'clock service, we're going to gather in the garden uh, for our reconvened annual meeting. Um, you'll probably be hearing from the vestry, or vestry members asking if you plan to attend because there'll be a box lunch and it, uh, you don't have to call this week but next week if you haven't heard from a best member and you're planning to attend please do call the office um, that would be a big help so it's exciting um, we give thanks to God for all that God's up to in our midst um, on Wednesday evening our order of evening for the evening is going to be a uh, commemoration of St. Augustine of Canterbury, and we do, wouldn't expect Tyler to know about this, but in line with his sermon, St. Augustine of, of Canterbury was the one who was sent to evangelize the Angles in what we now call England, to ev uh, evangelize them and to incorporate whatever part of their culture that could be Incorporated, incorporated in the Christian message. So rather than to steamroll over the angle, the culture of the angles, um, Augustine uh, went to uh, angle land with the instructions that he was to respect their culture and to uh, use the symbols of that culture to proclaim the gospel. So um, we'll be, that's something to celebrate, and we'll be celebrating that on Wednesday. Uh, so, uh, the rest of the announcements are in the uh, announcement message that went out yesterday about noon time, and I commend, I commend that to you. Uh, Tyler's uh, Sunday school uh, announcements went out on 
uh, Friday about noontime uh, with his video introduction and, and all kinds of things for um, uh, young people of all ages. Uh, I always enjoy not only the video introduction, but his, uh, uh, his other offerings in that message. So I encourage you, uh, whatever your age, to take advantage of that while we still have Tyler with us. I want to thank all of you who've been so faithful in continuing to send in your, or, or drop by your offerings, uh, your uh, monetary gifts in addition to your prayers uh, have been, uh, well, have been the empowering uh, vehicles to, for us to maintain our, our shared life and witness together over these last 14 months. And, and that's going to continue to be true as we go ahead. But right now, let me thank you for all that you've done. And let me also offer a prayer for the anniversary of Sandy and Lee Bay. Uh, we're going to be celebrating their anniversary in the week ahead. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Continue, therefore, to send your blessing upon Lee and Sandy that they may continue to so love, honor, and cherish each the other in faithfulness and patience in wisdom and true godliness that their home may continue to be a haven of blessing and peace. And this we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear hearts, we've been richly blessed in the life of the kingdom. Let us with gladness present the alms and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
ocean come with power. Make our hearts your habitation. On our souls your grace and show. Thanksgiving, for Pentecost we're using the first Eucharistic prayer and enriching our worship. It's found in your online bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God source of life and fountain of mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, 
The Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with all the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for, our, for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your nature, your name forever, through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honored, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. 
invite you to join with me in an act of spiritual communion. God of love and grace, of justice and peace, we give you thanks that in the sacrament of the altar, you assure us of your presence within us and within the body of Christ, the faithful through all the generations. Grant that we who have witnessed anew these holy mysteries, though unable to receive the physical elements of the sacrament, may be moved by your indwelling spirit ever more fully to embody your holy and life-giving presence, reshaping in your likeness the world around us, until we are gathered at last into the fullness of your glorious and eternal presence, through Christ our risen Lord. Amen.
Post-Communion prayer is on page 365 in the prayer book and printed in full in your online bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Spirit of truth lead you into truth, giving you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and to, pro and to proclaim the wonderful works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day, this Pentecost day, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 225, Hail the Festival Day.
Let us bless the power of the Spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.